We've all heard the phrase, it takes a village to raise a child. But let's explore another avenue to this, the notion of it takes a village to sustain a woman. You heard me, sustain a woman. Ever since we were young women, society set a definition for us to act a certain way. Whether that meant cooking at home or taking out the trash, whether that meant being the oldest daughter or the younger sibling, whether that meant taking care of ma and dada or paving the way in school. There was a certain societal norm for us to conform to. And as time went on, we began to define this norm for ourselves and put an immense amount of pressure for us to function at optimal capacity. Now, don't get me wrong. A certain amount of pressure is necessary, but there's a fine balance between too much and too little. And well, I was no different. Growing up as the oldest of three, I too believed I needed to live by society's definition of success, which in my household meant making straight A's, becoming a doctor, marrying by a certain age, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It was tough. And as I finally found my place in this world, I thought I figured it out. I figured out how to live in balance with it all only to realize life doesn't go according to plan. Let me share an example with you. In 2021, I had just given birth to my second son, Adarsh. I had also just bought a dental practice, and my father-in-law was just diagnosed with cancer. In this moment, life seemed impossible. How was I, with two young kids at home, going to take dad to his chemo appointments? How was I going to manage a business and be present for my patients? How was I going to be there for my older son, Butam? And what about being a wife to my husband? And how would I maintain my seva, which was so important to me? Now, I'm no expert at it, but what I did figure out is that this is a journey, and this journey is almost impossible without your village. That very same concept of a village that helped define who I am as a woman. When you feel you're on this path alone, you really feel the burden of it all. So instead, find your village that shares the same spiritual values as you, and then lean on your village. I could take dad to chemo because my husband Yogesh and mom would hold down the fort at home. I could be present for both Butam and others because I have a partner at work that allows me to be present at home more days than in the office. And I could maintain my seva because being surrounded by a group of women from all walks of life, coming together for the greater good empowers me to be a better person. So along my journey, I learned three things, and I wish to share those three things with you today. Number one. You are only given what you can handle. Everything in our life, the successes and the challenges, are given to us by a greater good. So whether you're struggling to figure out your career, whether you're having challenges with infertility, whether you're trying to mend your marriage, you are only given what you can handle. And if Swami entrusts you with this life and certain responsibilities, who are you to doubt yourself? Number two, it is okay to ask for help. Leaning on my village is not a source of weakness or vulnerability, but rather a source of strength. It takes a lot to pause and admit, hey, I need help. I mentioned to you that dad was diagnosed at the same time that I bought a business while having two young children at home. There were some days where we had no idea how we were going to manage. Completely speaking to the character of my niece, she offered her help despite her college workload. She said, hey, I can help out with the kids while you figure it out. Knowing how tough life was for us, this generosity was tremendous. The point is, ask for help. Don't do it alone. And number three, Lean on your inspiration. It is so easy to get stuck in this culture of never enough. These questions do not make life any easier. And the only way I was able to step out of it 
was by leaning on my guru, Mahant Swami Maharaj, who was only a letter away, only a pratna away. To this date, my source of constant strength comes from my guru and the values I have thanks to satsang. Regardless of the role I play in society, in the community, in my family, or even personally, the one realization that I've come to is that my most important role is to be a link. A link between my family members, a link between society and my children, a link between traditions and practicing them at home, a link between Hindu values and who I am. Thank you, and Jay Swaminarayan.